ikimlenga koma e full stop m full stop then you put the year in which the book was actually published in brackets then full stop then give us the title of the book give us the title of the book that title of the book it can either be in italics or you can underline it and then you put a full stop and then give us the town where that book was actually published say for example if this mlenga anthony mwape published a book in lusaka just give us lusaka that's actually the name of the town and then you give us uh, the company that actually published that particular book you can write a book and then you can actually contract or allow a publisher a given company to actually publish your book so basically give us the author and then you give us the abbreviations of the other names and then give us the year in the brackets full stop the title of the book full stop and then the town and then later on you are going to give us the 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 publisher it is the same thing if three or four people wrote that particular book okay give us the author the surname of the author then the abbreviation of their first names and then you go to the next one to the third one to the fourth one the rest is actually the same you do the same now sometimes we actually make a mistake say take for example um three people wrote a book and then you are having what is known as um in text citation say for example mlenga sakala and daka wrote a book jointly okay if you are quoting that book for the first time in your in text you need to indicate all the authors indicate their names don't you are actually writing it for the first time and then you say mlenga itel that one comes in after make the first quoting you have actually indicated all the 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 names of the authors are we together we don't want to be seeing these mistakes repeating themselves time and again no you have to write um properly okay you have to write properly because this is an academic uh paper okay which whereby even if another person picks your paper he writes it will meet the standards okay it will meet the standards so you can actually quote from the books and these books sometimes can be written by one author or two or three so that's how you go which other authentic sources can you actually um make reference from articles you can actually um make references from the articles apart from the articles apart from the articles there are also government documents okay there are government documents that you can actually make a reference to so make sure that uh, you can actually use those to back up your work so that your work meets uh, the standards your work has got authority okay apart from that you can also quote from the periodicals you can quote from the periodicals in the interest of time i'm just giving you those as we interact as we interact we'll be able to give you more information in fact what we'll do what we'll do how do you quote from the, maybe an article from a periodical from a journal and so on and so forth we'll prepare something and then we'll be able to forward it so that you'll be able actually to um see what is expected of you because we may not exhaust everything from here okay the other source the other authentic source where you can quote from are technical reports you can actually quote from technical reports okay they will give you authority they will give you authority published conferences you can also quote from such 
Okay? You can actually quote from that. The other source where you can actually quote and make the reference are published dissertations. Okay? Other people have conducted their research. And they have their research that it was published. You can actually um, quote from that. It's actually acceptable. It's accepted. Okay? So these are some of the sources from which you can actually make a reference. You can actually quote from those in, uh, these uh, sources, okay? We'll be able to forward this, and then you are going to have uh, access to it. Um, <clears throat> in as much as we want to make a reference, we quote a book, we quote a journal, we quote all these things, there is actually a tendency which is supposed to be discouraged. Most of us, we over -caught. Any statement that you actually put in your academic paper, you caught. Where is your voice? Okay? Where is your voice? Because it's like you are just reproducing what others have done. Where is your voice? Okay? Where is your voice? Your voice should come out. What are you saying about what this person said? Are you in agreement? Are you disagreeing? What conclusions can you make from that? So don't just, we don't want to have an assignment whereby it's full of quoting, through and through, quoting and quoting, quoting and quoting. <laughs> and then you come and just five say, after you told us to be quoting. No, you are supposed to use that appropriately. Okay, you are supposed to use that appropriately and intelligently. Okay? So that when you bring out an idea, you are going to say, yes, even this person also talked about the same thing, but he talked at a, 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 from this angle. I think maybe things should be uh, like this. So please don't overcourt. Don't overcourt. That is actually a caution. Don't overcourt. Your voice should come out. Okay? It's you who is writing. Okay? So we want to get, what are you saying about that particular thing? Very, very, very important. The other mistake that uh, um, students sometimes uh, make, apart from overcourting, okay, um, which one do you go for? Uh, a reference or a bibliography? Which one do you go for? A reference or a bibliography? Now, what's the difference between the two? When you are talking about referencing, references, it means that all the sources that you use in your in-text writing, they should actually reflect at the end. You list them. Say, for example, if I've used 10 books, I've quoted 10 books in my assignment. When I'm marking you, the first thing that I'm going to look at, I'll check the books that you have used inside there. I'll go and check where you have written references. All of them should appear. So if you have got nine books, and then there you have written references, and then we are finding maybe there are 20 there, we will caution you. Why? What about the bibliography? The bibliograph, maybe you could have consulted the material, you could have consulted some books, that you did not necessarily court. You just got an idea from there, and then maybe you paraphrase and so on and so forth. You can have actually several of them, several of them. Even if some of the books that are at the end there, they are not in the in-text, it's actually allowed. Now, why do we discourage a bibliograph? Students, sometimes they cheat. Okay, you just go on the net, get 50 books, put them there, okay? And then you're saying, I've done the work. So that's why we emphasize on references. We want to see, okay, so this student has used the five books in text. Am I going to see these five books? Oh, sorry, sorry. Am I going to see these five books at the end? So get the difference. Have we gotten the difference between references and bibliography? And we encourage you to use the um, um, references. And there are so many styles that we can use. We actually adopt the Harvard system of referencing. Very, very, very important. Okay. Lastly, uh, in the interest of time, um, how do you uh, cite um, in-text citations? 
the way you would write at the end. Say, for example, let's take, for example, um, Mlenga Anton Mwape wrote a book called Development in Zambia. Okay, and then uh, the town is Lusaka. And then maybe it was published may, maybe by Macmillan. When you are writing the reference at the end there, you are going to do what I've told you. Write the surname, and then you abbreviate the other names, the year, the title of the book, the town, and the publisher. But when you are quoting him in, in text cit citation, you don't need to put Mlenga Anton Mwape. No, you just say Mlenga. Then you actually put the year in brackets, and then you paraphrase. You have picked an idea that Mlenga actually wrote. You don't want to pick the word by word. You want to paraphrase it. But you are telling us that this idea, I borrowed it or I got it from Mlenga. You are going to say Mlenga in brackets, just put the year and then paraphrase it. If you want to get the actual words, word by word, you are going to say Mlenga in brackets, you put the year and the page number. And then you are going to quote the actual words that Mlenga said. Very, very, very important. Why do you put the page? So that when we are marking, I will go and look for that book for Mlenga, written by Mlenga. And on that page, I should find the exact words that are in your essay. No paraphrasing. Have we gotten the difference? Yes. If you are paraphrasing, just indicate the, the surname and then the year. But if you are giving us the actual words which somebody said, you have to indicate the year and the page number. I thought of making and clarifying those differences because sometimes we actually misuse them. Okay, for the retaining students, um, we need now to keep on improving and write papers that are convincing. Papers that, uh, when you are reading, you are saying, yes, this is a retaining student. We are not saying that the first years we are going to condone a mediocre type of work, no. From the word go, be serious, okay, take your position, and then see, what, how can I quote from the journal? How can I quote from this book? How can I quote from this and that? And then apply those uh, intelligently and rightly from the word go. Don't wait until we're in third year for you to begin to do the right thing. I've heard some students say, uh, I think now I can relax a bit. I'll start making points when I'll be in third year and so. At the end of the program, you're going to have a transcript. Are you going to be happy if your transcript first year, second year, it's just the carbon papers. Are you going to be happy? You have C, 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 C. So just from the way to go, make sure that you aim at doing the right thing. Okay? And that, it will give you some confidence. It will give you some motivation. In the first year, I did very well. I had A's. In the second year, I had A's or I had B+. Plus. Okay? And that, it will push you. It will give you the motivation. So please, let's do the right thing. Referencing is very, very, very important. You don't just write uh, things the way you used to write in grade 12. Essays. Okay, just an essay like that. Just your ideas, just giving us stories. No. They're supposed to be backed up by materials, okay, to give you authority to say, yes, what I'm writing, others have talked about it. If there are any queries, please, we can always interact. We are together and then we'll be able to give you uh, more information. Maybe I can just allow maybe one or two questions in the interest of time. Okay, so thank you so much. Um, we'll be able to forward this uh, so that you'll be able actually to get what we are trying to say. Thank you so much. Hello, I see you. It has been a long time now. I am happy to join with you today on this occasion uh, which marks our 60th residential. We are all aware that residential is usually a time when we share 
ideas. It is a time when we ask questions and get answers. And most of all, it is a time when we get to know each other. Therefore, I welcome you all to this 60th residential. A big hand once again. Since independence in 1964, our country has gone through various changes, various educational reforms with succeeding generations. But after 50 years of independence, we are the generation that has come to believe that development can only be achieved when we truly understand our environment, when we devise the tools to deal with our environment and attain the skills of using those tools. This is evident in the call for localized education, decentralized government, and community-driven projects. After 50 years of independence, we are the generation that has seen the importance of education. This truth is self-evident in the growing number of learning institutions and students. Today, technology is rising. Markets are shifting. Fortunes are changing and traditions are falling. These are the